It's somewhat commonly known that the Zelda timeline is less of a timeline and more of a time dinner fork. But do you know how these mini mini games all fit together in the grand scheme of things? Altogether, we've had 17 games, but 11 different links, 12 different Zeldas, and only two different Ganondorfs. What's the deal? Well, I'm here to tell you in what I call a quick history of Hyrule. Spoilers ahoy. So I'll be starting with the Creation Era timeline before things go all forky down the road. Many, many years ago, the goddesses Din, Nehru, and Feror created everything. Din made the land, Nehru created order, and Feror made all the creatures. After finishing this task, they went away, but they left behind the Triforce. The Triforce is a magical artifact with the power to grant wishes to whoever touches it, but it has a list of demands of the user. The user must have a strong heart, innate ability, and a balance of the three virtues, power, wisdom, and courage. Anything less than that will make the Triforce split apart, giving the user the one piece which best represents his virtues, while the others appear on whomever best represents those virtues living in that age. Before leaving, Din, Nehru, and Feror entrusted the Triforce to the goddess Hylia. There are other goddesses, by the way, not to mention light gods, wind gods, ocean gods, storm gods, and even fish gods. Back in Hyrule, the evil demon king Demise tried to take over the world, so before fighting him to the death, the goddess Hylia hid the Triforce as well as humanity on an island she raised into the sky. After beating Demise, she tried to use the Triforce to finish him off, but as only mortals can use it, Hylia chose to be reincarnated. Many years later, the first Zelda was born, not a princess yet, mind you, and after growing into a young woman, we entered Skyward Sword, in which Zelda is awakened to her previous destiny as the goddess Hylia, but ends up in trouble as Demise is on the verge of getting free for good. Her childhood friend, the first Link, who is the chosen hero of the goddess, manages to save Zelda and stop Demise, but before his defeat, Demise promises to come back time and time again, and thus, a curse was born. Also note that it is here where the Master Sword, formerly known as the Goddess Sword, was made and first used by Link. The crisis over, the Temple of Time is built by Rauru the Sage, and it's used as a link to the Sacred Realm, where the Triforce is locked away in order to prevent conflict. Around the same time, Zelda creates the first kingdom of Hyrule. Many, many years pass, and at some point, an ambiguous evil appears. It's unclear if this is the cause of Demise slash Ganon at this point, but the descendant of Link, known as the Hero of Min, appears, and after being granted a magical sword by the Bikori, a microscopic race which also lives in Hyrule, the hero stops all the baddies and locks the evil away in his sword. And so we enter the Minish Cap, in which 100 years after the Hero of Min sealed the baddies in his sword, an evil Bikori sorcerer named Vati frees while searching for the Light Force, which turns out to be inside Princess Zelda. Vati manages to gain power and become the monstrous Vati's Wrath. But the new Link, the hero of the Minish, defeats him with the previous hero's original sword, which has since been powered up into the Four Sword, a blade which splits the user into four. Vati gets defeated, and peace returns to the world. An unspecified time later, Vati, thought dead, reappears, but this time is sealed by the new hero into the Four Sword, where he remains until Four Swords, in which you'll never guess. Vati escapes his seal, and a new hero appears and seals him back into the sword. Many years after this event, a war rages again in Hyrule, and the new Link, who would later become the Hero of Time, is left in the care of the forest spirit, the Deku Tree, by his mother before she passes away. Meanwhile, Ganondorf the Thief, an incarnation of Demise, is born again in the Gerudo Desert of Hyrule. He was raised by the evil twin witches of ice and fire known as Twinrova. With Ganondorf a grown man, and the current Zelda and Link both children, we enter Ocarina of Time, in which Ganondorf manages to touch the Triforce thanks to a silly goof by Zelda and Link, but as he doesn't embody the incredibly specific attributes, it instantly splits apart, giving him only the Triforce of Power. His wish of conquest doesn't happen, but he does become immensely powerful, and over the next seven years he takes over the entire land of Hyrule. During this time, Zelda was in hiding, and Link was put to sleep by the Sage Raru in the Temple of Time. After these years have passed, Link sets out on a quest to awaken the five missing sages, and confronts Ganondorf atop his castle. The battle between them has huge ramifications for the rest of the timeline, and there are ultimately two results which create three possible timelines. First we have the possibility of Link being defeated, meaning Ganondorf gets the missing Triforce pieces from Link and Zelda, and obtains truly supreme power, leading to the Downfall Era timeline. However, if Link is victorious, Link gets sent back to his childhood by Zelda, resulting in both the Child Link Era timeline, which he was sent to, and the Adult Link Era timeline, which is the world the adult Princess Zelda was still living in. With that, we have finished the Creation Era of Hyrule, but we still have three more timelines to go into. I'll be starting with the Downfall Era first, as it's the longest and most complex of the three. So, just to recap, the Hero of Time went up against Ganondorf and sadly lost. With Ganon victorious, he finally obtains the Triforce of Wisdom from Zelda and the Triforce of Courage from Link. With the Hero gone, the Six Sages and Princess Zelda, who is the Seventh Sage, come to their last resort and simply seal Ganon away into the Sacred Realm, which had previously housed the Triforce. They then lock the realm itself away so that it can never be opened again except by those of their bloodline. 
Ganon's influence changes the Sacred Realm into the Dark World, a twisted land of evil which Ganon rules. But he never stops wishing to return to Hyrule to have control over everything. Many years later, a mysterious dark priest named Aganon appears. He kills the king and then imprisons the current Princess Zelda. We then immediately enter A Link to the Past, in which Aganon breaks the seal to the Dark World by utilizing the descendants of the previous seven sages. Ganon, however, is stopped from escaping by the new Link called the Hero of Legend. Not sealed this time, Ganon is dead. And Link finally touches the Triforce himself, is judged worthy of meeting its ridiculous demands, and wishes for peace to return back to the world, which it does. However, Ganon's surrogate mothers known as Twinrova were plotting his resurrection, which takes us right away to Oracle of Ages and Seasons, in which the same Link, the Hero of Legend, is sent on a quest to restore order in the lands of Labrina and Holodrum. Link saves the land of Holodrum first from General Onox, in turn saving the Oracle of Seasons, Din. He travels to the land of Labrina next, where he stops the Sorcerer Varan and saves the Oracle of Ages. Both of the plots of Onyx and Varan were part of Twinrova's goal to resurrect Ganon, which they managed to do, but he is brought back as a mindless beast. The Hero of Legend beats him again and goes on his own journey by ship while seeking training. This takes us right into Link's Awakening, in which our superstar, the Hero of Legend, is caught in a terrible storm and shipwrecked on an island, which turns out to be the dream of a creature known as the Windfish. After obtaining eight magical instruments, Link awakens the Windfish and escapes the dream, but his whereabouts after are unknown. Back in Hyrule, the kingdom had been flourishing until about 400 years had passed, when Yuga, a visitor from the alternate universe of Low Rule, is sent to Hyrule by Princess Hilda. This takes us right into A Link Between Worlds, in which Yuga uses the sages and Zelda to resurrect Ganon again, and immediately fuses with the beast, which grants him the Triforce of Power. Meanwhile, Hilda extracts the Triforce of Wisdom from Princess Zelda. In a bid to bring back Low Rule's Triforce, which had been destroyed and thus sent the world into ruin, Hilda and Yuga Ganon then try to kill Link to get his Triforce of Courage, but are overwhelmed by Link and forced to give up. Link and Zelda then return to Hyrule, but taking pity on Princess Hilda and the land of Low Rule, use their united Triforce to wish the Low Rule Triforce back into existence. With the full Triforce together again in Hyrule, it was used throughout the years by the royal family to make Hyrule prosperous. Sometime and some generations later, the then King of Hyrule had a son and daughter, and though the son had the right to succession, the king didn't think him worthy of protecting the Triforce, and passed the Triforce of Wisdom and Power to his daughter Princess Zelda. When the old king died, the prince, who was now the new king, became suspicious and jealous of his sister Princess Zelda. He enlisted an evil wizard to find out where the Triforce was hidden, but the wizard went too far and cast a spell on her which made her sleep for eternity. After some time, the previously jealous prince, who was now the new king, had since changed his ways, but without the full Triforce he still wasn't able to stop the decline of Hyrule, and after many years, Ganon was resurrected. He stole the Triforce of Power, and the new Princess Zelda, who was a different one than the one who was currently sleeping, broke her Triforce of Wisdom into eight pieces and hid them throughout the land of Hyrule, which takes us right into The Legend of Zelda, in which the new Link, the hero of Hyrule, journeys across the land gathering up the Triforce of Wisdom pieces, and once assembling them all, takes on Ganon and defeats him in his castle. Years later, the hero of Hyrule has grown up and has been targeted by Ganon's minions, who need his blood to resurrect their lord. And so, the adventure of Link, in which the hero of Hyrule learns about the sleeping princess and goes on an adventure to obtain the Triforce of Courage, having already recovered the Triforces of Wisdom and Power in the previous game. After emerging victorious, he uses the Triforce to break the spell on the Sleeping Princess, and is last seen getting some action behind the curtains. This brings us to the end of the Downfall Era timeline. Now that we've covered the creation and the Downfall Eras of Hyrule, all that's left are the two timelines sprung from the happier endings of Ocarina of Time, the Child Link and Adult Link eras. Starting with the Child Link era, we begin with Link, the same hero as Ocarina of Time, having just been sent back to his childhood after defeating Ganondorf in the future. Now back in his time, Link has a chance to prevent Ganondorf's retrieval of the Triforce of Power, and so goes to warn Princess Zelda in Hyrule Castle. Zelda gives Link the Ocarina of Time and sends him away so it can be hidden, meaning the way to the Triforce can never be opened. Link takes this chance to leave on a journey to find his missing fairy companion Navi, whereupon we enter Majora's Mask where the hero of time, while searching for Navi, runs into a Skull Kid wearing a peculiar mask. The Skull Kid escapes to the alternate world of Termina, where he's causing the moon to fall in order to kill all of the inhabitants. Link uses the Ocarina of Time given to him by Zelda to manipulate time until he's able to confront and stop the Skull Kid. However, it turns out that it was the mask that he was wearing that was doing all of the evil, and upon defeating it and saving Termina, Link lives happily ever after. Or does he? Back in Hyrule and years later, Ganondorf, who had been arrested after the reveal of his treachery by Link, was facing his execution by the Sages of Hyrule. However, due to him being the chosen holder of the Triforce of Power, he was able to survive, nearly escaping until the other Sages panic and quickly banish him to the Twilight Realm, which is another parallel dimension of Hyrule. Unsurprisingly, Ganondorf is able to take over the Twilight Realm and after many years in exile, he begins an invasion of Hyrule. His army ends up victorious, and the new Zelda surrenders to the Twilight Army, letting Hyrule become consumed by Twilight, changing any inhabitants caught in it to spirits. It is 
is here we enter Twilight Princess, in which the new Link, called the Hero of Twilight, teams up with the cursed former princess of the Twilight Realm, Minna, to stop Ganondorf. Together they confront Ganondorf and with Zelda's help manage to defeat him and his army, freeing the land. With the curse upon Midna lifted, she destroys the link between Hyrule and the Twilight Realm, and the new hero leaves for parts unknown. Over the next hundreds of years, the lines of Zelda and Link continue until Ganondorf is reincarnated once more. He acquires two ancient relics, a trident and a mirror left behind by a sinister cult named the Tribe of Darkness. With his new power, he becomes the Demon King Ganon once again, and summons a new army of monsters. The new Princess Zelda, noticing this darkness, gathers the sages and Link at the Shrine of the Four Sword, where the Wind Mage Vati was sealed long ago. Here we enter Four Swords Adventures, in which the new Link, the Hero of Light, inadvertently causes Vati to be freed by pulling out the Four Sword. The power of the Four Swords splits Link into four copies of himself, and by working together, they are able to stop the revived Vati, as well as seal away Ganon and the Four Sword, bringing the evil to a rest once again. Victorious, Link returns to Hyrule Castle amongst great celebration, and it is here where we have finished the relatively brief Child Link timeline. Going back to the ending of Ocarina of Time again, remember that while Link himself was sent back to his childhood and changed the events of the future, the future that he had left still existed. This is the adult Link era, where Ganondorf had just been sealed away and Hyrule began to rebuild. After many generations, Ganondorf finally managed to escape his banishment and beset the people of Hyrule once more. However, with the Link of this time gone, there was no hero to oppose him, and his terror spread unopposed. With no other options, the people turned to the gods to save them, which they responded to by flooding the land, sealing Ganondorf as well as the land of Hyrule under the Great Sea. The survivors of the Flood began to build a new civilization as the old Hyrule slept beneath the waves. Unfortunately, not even the Flood could stop Ganondorf, and in time, he resurfaced. This takes us to the Wind Waker, in which the new Link, the hero of winds, while on a quest to save his sister who had been kidnapped by Ganondorf, teams up with Tetra the Pirate and journeys on the Great Sea. Tetra is revealed to be the new descendant of Zelda, and when she too is captured by Ganondorf, Link faces off against him. Ganondorf's goal is to revive the old kingdom of Hyrule, and though he comes close to using the Triforce, he is intercepted by the former king of Hyrule, who uses the Triforce to wish that the old Hyrule be washed away permanently. With Ganondorf's plan averted, the Hero of the Winds defeats Ganondorf, turning him to stone which rests sealed at the bottom of the sea. After this victory, Link and Tetra set out on a journey together to find a new land to settle, and it is on this journey that we come to the Phantom Hourglass, in which Link and Zelda are caught up in a plot by the evil Phantom Bellum. Link teams up with his new friend Captain Linebeck to defeat this monster, and upon emerging victorious, he and Tetra are returned to their ship. Following these events, Link and Zelda discover a new continent and establish a land they call New Hyrule. The new Hyrule Castle was built at the base of a large tower, as well as the center of a series of railroad tracks which were on the land when they arrived. These tracks in the tower are actually the spirit tracks in the Tower of Spirits, structures built to seal a demon named Maladus within the earth. Left behind to protect this system are several beings of the Locomo tribe. A century after the founding of New Hyrule, Burn, a member of the Locomo tribe, becomes tempted by power and teams up with demons to resurrect Maladus. The seals on Maladus began to diminish and we find ourselves at Spirit Tracks, in which the demon Cole and Locomo trader Burn use the new Princess Zelda's body in the resurrection ceremony for Maladus. Zelda's spirit is separated from her body and travels together with the new Link, who defeats the revived Maladus and returns Zelda's spirit to her body. Link and Zelda return to New Hyrule and celebrate their victory. This ends the likewise relatively brief adult Link era, and this is also the end of the current Zelda timeline. A story of 11 heroes, sometimes named Link, four of whom star in more than one game, 11 Princess Zeldas that go along with those 11 Links, except for one extra who was sleeping, and a demon king named Demise, who was born again two times, one of which was featured in nine games in the series. Hopefully, later this year, we are set to be getting a new entry to the Zelda universe with Zelda Wii U. Personally, I'm hoping that it'll be set right after Skyward Sword, and utilize the big, undeveloped land of Hyrule for its open world. I'm really curious to hear what you all think it will be, so let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Also, if you enjoyed this video, be sure to check out my other Zelda-related videos. I'm going to link my top 10 Zelda games and Hyrule Warriors Legends review up at the top. I'm also going to throw in one of my Metal Gear videos up here, which I encourage you to watch, as I know how to cover a lot more than just Zelda. Go watch them! Them. Anyway, thanks again everybody, I'll see you next time.